just took a deep breath and a clap, trying to see if her husband can at long last win this 500-mile race, but still a long way to go on this restart. I don't know about you, Davey, but obviously the adrenaline at the start of this thing gets ramped up, and then we like the drivers kind of level off into a race phase, yeah. and now that adrenaline is It's right back. Now. Oh, no, this is, a, this is much more intense than the start of the race, because you know you have a long ways to go. You just want to get through the first part, but this is it. This is for the... This is for getting your face on that Borg Warner Trophy. This is what it's all about. It changes your life to win this race, and this is good. this is an important one. Uh, Scott McLaughlin had to make some uh, repairs to his car during that red flag condition, so he will have to go to the rear of the field. And I would imagine the energy level all throughout this race course is starting to rise. The pace car starts to pull away. Jake, where is the field? making sure they scrub off tires, keep the heat cycle up in those tires. They are headed toward you in the north end. And Marcus Erickson appears to be the one that is doing that the most to those Firestone Firehawks, as one would assume, the very stoic Joseph Newgarden inside that cockpit of that shell machine car number two is just in front of him. Santino Ferrucci in third with Alexander Rossi in fourth. Kristen Airy, we're about to settle the Indianapolis 500. Erickson starts to get uh, up with Newgarden. They slow, much better start though that we saw with Pato Award. Newgarden we go again. turn four to the inside. Fans are on their feet. They have been on their feet all day long in a good battle. Side by side, three wide at the start finish line. And we got a crash mark right before the yard of bricks. Ferrucci and Erickson are keeping their foot in the throttle as they go side by side. Now they'll have to check up as we look to that accident on the front stretch. And it Run happens with four caution. laps to go, Davey. So if they decide to finish this race under caution, race control's got a lot of work to do to sort all this out. Well, it had Erickson crossing that line first. Now, short track race, and we revert back to the last green flag. They don't do that here. It's, it's when you, as they cross, it shows Erickson the winner, Newgarden second, Fruity, and this was lining up to be such a great race. I hate to see that, but after two reds, I think they're probably just going to let it go under yellow. Benjamin no. Peterson, Ed Carpenter, Davey, two of the cars involved. Ed is uh, up against the pit wall. Benjamin Peterson slid across the start finish line, no, and uh, that, that's the two cars that are stopped near the start. Yeah, and I seen Graham Rahal, I think, got involved with it as well. It looks like he continued on. I seen that Pedersen got the worst of it. Looks like an Ed Carpenter right at the last minute. Their filing's very slow down through this start finish line. Um, so a lot of disappointment for a lot of drivers like right there. You know, Newgard, I actually right now showing in this fourth position. Shows Ferrucci in second, Erickson in first. Oh, yeah, and with the yellow please. out uh, with three laps to go, Mark, and they're going to continue that yellow. I think we just see. I think we're going to have a two-time winner of this race. And this Unbelievable. Kid has an incredible ability, Davey, in these races to put himself in position to take advantage of some of these issues. Yeah, as we see, Graham Rahal did get in that uh, mark. The left front tire up in there, he's he's able to continue around. I want to give a little hat off, you know, another shout out to Graham. He started at pit lane. He started yeah. at the gasoline alley. He went two laps down. He got he came back out on the racetrack, two laps down. He made a lap up. He had at one time he was a friend the fourth fastest lap of the race he was he was getting that car around there really good unfortunate day for him it, it didn't it's not in like he wanted but he did a good job and they are going to throw the red flag davy hamilton and oh. i think fans agree with that decision well, from I the think, looks of it i think it's pretty darn great that they're going to do it. it's going to come by with a green white checker that looks like it for this shootout man and and yeah i mean it's going to be a wild one when you got erickson frucci rossi newgarden polo and dixon uh, it's going to be one of those six, I have a feeling, but it's it's a, it's a crazy one. Alex Wolf. Well, when that yellow flag came out, they initially were trying to Wolf sort out, thinking sakes. the new guard was in fourth. Tim Sindrick got on this the radio and Joe Joseph. Well, the eight cars, the leader, we should be second. They're going to have to red flag this to sort it out. And with the red flag being out, now when that came out, Ashley Newgarden dropped to a knee almost in prayer from absolute despair to still a potential chance for a triumph in the two pit. And Davey, we see on our multi-screen monitor down below a look of disbelief bordering on disgust. A lot of hands on hips in the pit box of Marcus Aaron. Uh, yeah, not too, a lot of people not too happy about that at all in that Ganassi pit. And we see basically what happened. Looks like Lungard tried to go to the inside. They ended up three wide. Ed Carper being the sandwich, you know, the meat in that sandwich just got squeezed out and uh, that's what caused that melee in the back and uh boy these they're, the starts and restarts are so close graham barely got a piece of it but just um through, actually as you said uh, live four wide down this front straightaway and, and davy and uh, i know i i think there's uh, you know uh, 
a lot of understanding uh, of those that are battling it out for the lead that might go three or four wide at the start finish line on a restart. But I think some people red. are scratching their head when that happens. When you come back, 13, 14, finish the yellow flag. That's right, yeah. You know, and it just, I mean, everybody's racing for their position. We, we're watching the lead of this race, but there's, there's drivers in the back of this field trying to get a top 10, trying to get a top 15. So they're going for it too on these last few laps and unfortunately got together. And that one there, just, uh, just no room. And I, hard to blame anybody, I'll be honest hard to blame on anybody there was a hole on the bottom side it just kind of closed up ed didn't know he was coming and 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 obviously graham on that side didn't know he's there and petterson just had uh you know had nowhere to go well davy we wanted to get the details and the official announcement from indycar at the indianapolis motor speedway before we address the issue with that accident in turn number two happy to report no reported injuries Leo Castroneves, the last to do it 21 years ago. It had been 31 years since it had been done when he accomplished the feat. Can Marcus Erickson now join that list? He's got work to do with Joseph Newgarden, Santino Ferrucci, and Alexander Rossi, a trio of Americans, and then Alex Polo, the pole center behind him. Chris, they're coming at you. Pace car has left the track, and a quick start for the defending champ, Marcus Erickson. Joseph Newgarden, mm -hmm. five car lengths behind. He saw the green flag, and he flagged out on it, did Erickson. But here comes Joseph Newgarden in turn number one. Erickson weaving back and forth like he did a year ago to try to protect that lead. He'll do it in the turn number one. Erickson, Newgarden, and Ferrucci. Marcus Erickson trying to win back-to-back -back in the plus five hunters, but here comes Joseph Newgarden. He's closed in on that rear wing. He has they were up again. It's deja vu. Erickson goes behind the white line, and it's Joseph Newgarden swinging to the outside for the final time. Joseph Newgarden has taken the lead of the Indianapolis 500 with just two turns to go. Marcus Erickson on his heels. Newgarden into turn number four. Erickson looks to the inside, looks to the outside. Newgarden has a two-car length lead. Advance Auto Park, twin checkered flag in the air. in the battle at the start-finish line, and Joseph Newgarden. Unbelievable. He got the monkey off his back. Unbelievable. Great job. I mean, that end was amazing. Frucci did a good job. Little, you know, he's a little slow on that restart, but man, what a fight between those two for the win. I would imagine Davey Hamilton, the team wow. Penske, has heard all the whispers about, hey, what's happened since Roger took over the series <laughs> in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Things have not gone well for that team. That's going to quiet those critics going to quiet today. them all down today. Absolutely. Great run by Joseph. He did what he had to do. Unbelievable. And I mean, he was aggressive. You thought he was going to come down pit lane coming off turn four to try to keep Erickson out of his draft. Alex Wolf. Joseph Newgarden's wife, Ashley, in absolute tears, heading towards victory lane. The crew exploded over the pit wall in celebration. Tim Sindrick now shaking hands. One of the first men up was Ed Carpenter after the checkered flag fell to shake hands. And one of the people with the camera in Joseph Newgarden's pit handed a pass to head to victory lane. And that's what Joseph Newgarden gets. Cross his name off the list of best drivers to never win the 500. And before we get to our post-race festivities, let's go around the course. Nick Yeoman, what a finish. Mark, he shut him up he shut them all up joseph newgarden has parked that car on the yard of bricks and he's hopping out as we speak to celebrate with these race fans unbelievable mark one of the best drivers of this era joseph newgarden has done it michael young looks like he's going to go into the crowd what a scene here in indianapolis michael yeah, he bypassed what his old teammate does climbing the fence joseph newgarden has gone in with the crowd to celebrate the 19th victory for roger penske at this historic racetrack and joseph newgarden the bus bro has fans draped all over him as he Pumps his fist in the air, fans excited. Jake Curry, what a day here in Indianapolis. Michael, I remember when Joseph Newgarden won the Freedom 100, saying to him, it's not supposed to be this easy for you. But then he got to the IndyCar Series, and this was his white whale, Joseph Newgarden, who has been, as Nick said, one of the finest drivers of the last He's decade within this sport, has now gotten what so many thought may permanently elude him, an Indianapolis 500 mile race. One other note I want to say to everybody here in the northeast end of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, this is why we come back to this place to see the joy and the absolute thrill for Joseph Newgarden 
and what a moment for all of us to be able to collectively share it watching a kid from Tennessee win in Indianapolis. Jake, Jake, it's his 27th win, but the most important of his career, and we have never seen anything like what we just saw. Joseph Newgarden celebrating with the fans along the front stretch and the all the fans here in turn four. Give them a cheer, turn four. All the fans listening on the radio, they're watching the monitor here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 107th running of this great race and the win to Joseph Newgarden. Rob Blackman. Crocodile tears for Santino Ferrucci. A hug from Larry Foyt, a hug from Michael Cannon. Santino Ferrucci celebrates his 25th birthday on May 31st. An early birthday gift today, a top three finish. Santino, congratulations on finishing third. What a run. I wow. can't thank these guys enough. Uh, all of our AJ Foyt team, sorry I'm so emotional. I just, I thought we had that thing won. We had probably the, one of the best cars all day. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people riding on board today. My friends back home, Chris Rock, Lucy, Larry's mom, you know, all of our veterans. So, uh, yeah, I really, really want her to win this one. Any way to explain the emotional toll that you were going through, waiting through not one, but two red flag stops, knowing you were so close? I, I thought we had the lead going into the final yellow. That's what I saw, and that's what I thought we had. Um, but obviously, timing and scoring doesn't lie, so obviously just try to get another good restart and um yeah marcus just did a hell of a job with the restart and you know joseph drove a hell of a race and you know i'll take what we can get so